Okay, please, are you are you sure it's loud enough? Make it extra loud. It shouldn't be a problem if it's too loud. It's, be, it's a problem when it's not loud enough, yeah. So, <clears throat> good evening, everybody, on Facebook. Uh, we're welcoming you to another day and another evening of HMT. Okay. So, uh, here we go for the second evening of uh, HMT here. Uh, I, I saw the program with uh, Dr. Fries, even though I was preparing my slide, because we are doing this slide. The, this slide. So, uh, but I saw that it was well responded, so thank God. It's make it more practical, you know, what I think. That's my uh, conclusion. So please go and share the message, go and share the link, and go and invite your friends, go and invite your families, go and tag people that you know. And uh, go and tag as many people as you know, as you want, people you care about. This uh, HMT is going to be about history makers, about personalities. How do we stop being biomasses? And how do we stop being indifferent? And how do we begin to become real humans? And um, OK, here we go. You have the slides, please. Did you people have a nap? Anybody managed to have a nap? Yeah. Ah, you see? <laughs> Some people managed to. So, madam, I'm concerned about you. Well, we had a we had program. An extra tutorial. They didn't wait for the, for the uh, program. They waited shortly. Tutorial for uh, no, so the with, church. With the social, social church. Uh, pastor. I'm not, I don't know about that, but take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Take care of, because you are, you are not going to have enough long night and you get your, some rest, get some rest. If you have the minute out, take it, take advantage of it, so that you have the energy to keep on going. Okay, here we are. Where is, our, where is my pencil here? Who does God call a man? Did Adams use it? Yes. OK, look for it, ask. Did anybody see the pointer? No, no, go look for the one. Go look for that one, because it, you don't just miss things like that. Who does God call a man? That is the topic today. Who does God call a man? You know, it's the same topic we are going to about personality, man. Yes, please. Isaiah 59, 14 to 16. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the streets, and equity cannot enter. So truth fails, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness, it sustained him. Now, justice is turned back, and righteousness stands afar off. Truth is falling in the street, and equity cannot enter. So truth fails, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Then the Lord saw, where is your microphone? Without microphone, nobody is hearing you. No. Babusha, you know how to wear this, your gown, or what do you call it? <laughs> and look, and wear shoe or eye heel. Well, you are not using brain. <laughs> what is needed right now is not the gown, it's functionality. We have to start all over again. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. So truth fails, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Then the Lord saw, saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his own arm brought salvation for him, 
and his own righteousness, it sustained him. It's, you know, he said here, I wonder that there was, see, then the Lord saw it and it displeased him. What is that there was no justice, right? He saw that there was no man. So the problem, what displeased God, is not only the problem of student, and I'm going to start with that better. Cook, much as I to have cook news yet. So what, <clears throat> then he saw it, it displeased him that there was no justice, but even what, more, what displeased him even more is that he saw that there was no man, you see. So this man that God is talking about, what man is it as power yesterday's class? Personality. Personality. And wonder, because only personality can challenge these things. This green something is not, I, I'm not seeing it as clearly as, where is it now? Is it, is it showing? No. I'm trying my best. It's tiny. Please, I'm going to be putting this in my pocket. Because the way it's disappearing. Just assign one of you, somebody should be in charge of the pencil. Because if I look for it tomorrow, it's a problem. This is better for me. So he said, <clears throat> then the Lord saw it and it displeased them. But the only thing, not the, the, the thing that displeased him is not just that there was no justice, but he saw that there was no man. That's a bigger tragedy. Because if there is man, there will be justice. But you see, how can God say there is no man when there are millions of people on the earth? How can God say there is no man where there are thousands, millions, hundreds of thousands of human beings, men and women all over the earth? Can you worship? Yes, Larry Beth. So how can there be no, no man when there are millions all over? There was nobody speaking for them. Intercessor here means it's someone speaking on behalf of another. Advocate. Therefore, his arm brought him salvation for him, and his, and his own righteousness is sustained him. Now, but the real task we are dealing with is here. Now, let's go back again. Anytime there is no justice, it's just because of one argument. No man. You remember yesterday, there was no rain. Why? Because God has not created a man. God could not provide the resources. No provision because still there was no... Now, but in January, I mean, in Genesis, Genesis that is understandable. Fluchite Smith, I'm sad you see there. In... In Genesis, that was understandable because God had not created anybody. So there was no man for, yeah, to till the ground because that was justifiable. See? But here, so what do you, how do you justify that? When there are billions of us, how many billions? Five, seven, seven. seven. over seven billion people. And here God is saying there is no man. That's an indictment on all of us. It's an indictment. So anytime there is no justice, so when people talk about Africa, revival is going on. Oh, there are men of God. From God's point of view, there are. As long as injustice is reigning, there is no man. And here he's not talking about male. He's talking about no, no. Responsible. Oh, yes. Personal. Personal. Ah. <laughs> He's talking about personalities. Mm -hmm. So justice, when there is no justice, is because of this problem. And then when there is no righteousness, things are not being done right in the society, it's because of this. When for, truth is falling, when there is no truth in the society, it's because of this. When there is no equity, 
in the society is because of this. When the truth is failing, cannot hold ground, is because of this. And when people who depart from evil are even being persecuted for it, so you are now a victim because you don't do evil, is because of this. So can you imagine how serious this question is? When I'm showing the right thing, are you making it big so that people it's big enough for people to see? Yeah, but do they see what I'm, I'm underlining? No. They cannot see the pointer? Because it's not clear enough. They see the presentation itself. Ah, okay. Like but there's no way for you to point out. No. But you can point out the screen, right? Yes. Look, yes. Your own screen. Yes. Can they see the words? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, can you see how important this issue is? I'm sorry because I'm going to take care of my voice. I'm not going to shout because of the, my voice. I've, been, I've made a few mistakes. I'm, when you walk around without cold, you risk getting the thing I'm going So anyway, you see how important this is? I, apart from myself, have not seen any other preacher lay so much emphasis. Maybe they are there, or I don't say they are not there, on this thing that God's heart is broken about. Justice, truth, righteousness, you know, uh, equity. These concepts are concepts that is that they are not coming from the church. It's that they are not coming from the Bible. It's that they are coming from the law book. Is this the Bible? And the concept of personality is like People don't even think it's a big deal to go and confront something in the world, to go and fight for equity somewhere, to go and fight for justice. We think that it is the freedom fighters who do that, yeah, or activists who do that, not church people. Yeah. But this is the Bible, this is God speaking. And we have left it for activists. God is the number one activist. God is demanding that we become like this. You know, what do you call, apart from activists, there is something you call human rights fighters, or what do you call them? There is something, freedom fighters? No. There is another word. Civil Legal, rights. civil rights. Civil rights activists from civil rights leaders, civil rights Okay, there was a man in Nigeria they used to call Ganifa Weimi. Yes. What, 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 who was he? He was not just a citizen. Human rights activists. Human rights activists. Okay, people like that. Yeah. So we think that it's just for them. Yeah. What they show in car is their own. Yeah. And how Christians do, do? Do people think it's a Christian duty? No. They think it's the, for the intellectuals, for the lawyers. Yeah. But it's a Christian duty. I'm sorry, guys. God is demanding that we be the force of justice in the society. We are supposed to have so many human rights organizations from the church. Not Amnesty International. Amnesty International organizations like that are supposed to be many coming from the church. Human Rights Commission, these are supposed to be led by Christians. We have lost the spirit of Christ in the church today. We have the religion. We have the religion. We are the sink. And shout hallelujah and dance. It is dancing steps we are, we are learning in school church. <laughs> Not how to carry the spirit of Christ. It is not justice. They are teaching us how to stand for justice for what is right. It is not how to stand for what is right. It is not how to stand for equity, to look for equity. All those people names that were mentioned in Wale Shoyinka, Ganifawe Imi, Tai Sholami, all those people, all of them are supposed to be church members. And there are supposed to be thousands of them. People who are known for righteousness, for what is right. And even if they are going to be Wale Shoyinkas and Shai Sholamis, 
who, who are not Christians, who are atheists doing this, until Christians, until the people of God be, be, become responsible and take responsibility for righteousness. Because they are his people. He is the God of righteousness. And when his people champion this, then righteousness will reign in the society. Equity will not reign, even if all these atheists are trying their best, until the children of God, who represent the God of equity, the God of righteousness, stand for it and begin to champion it again. Truth will not reign supreme. The world will not recognize the truth until we begin to raise people in our churches. I personally believe that minimum 10% of every church membership should be involved in fighting for justice and equity. Do you have a church? Do you have a church you go to? Do you have a church you go to? Do you have a church you go to? All your churches, <laughs> all your churches, at least 10% of, let's say you have 10 people in your church. No, 100 people. 10 of them should be fighting for justice one way and one place or the other. Minimum. But ideally, 50%, everybody in the church should be fighting for justice one way or the other. That is the biggest testimony and testament that you have personalities in your church. In God's eyes, eh, let me tell you something that's going to shock you. In God's eyes, you only have as many members as you know, I, okay, we are, let's say we are 10 people here. God is only seeing the single one that is fighting for justice as a man, as a personality. So only the personality God is calling man. All the rest, God is not recognizing them as humans. No, they are humans like God's creations. God, they are people, but not men. So let's say you have a thousand people in your church and you have only two people fighting for righteousness, championing the cause of justice, truth, and equity. You actually have not 1,000 people, you have two members in your church. So let's say now we go to Africa where we have millions of people in a church. You know how we count membership and members? We count members by sheer sitting place. Oh, this is a 100,000 sitting auditorium. It is by the seat we count humans. Because we are counting flesh. Flesh is what we are counting. But God is counting functionality. God is counting those who stand for the cause of Christ. God is counting those who stand for righteousness and fight for righteousness and go to fight for right. These are the people God is recognized. So if you have 100,000 sitters church and there are only two individuals out of 100,000 who are fighting and championing the cause of justice and righteousness, you only have two members. So that is why I would rather have 10 people who are standing for justice and righteousness, who are living full life, who are personalities. In one word, we call them personalities. So I only want to have 10 people who are personalities than have a million people who are just biomasses of crowd. Gray massive crowd who are just coming to jail. Hallelujah, hallelujah, doing steps. <laughs> I'm looking in the mouth of me as a preacher. Eh, Papa, <laughs> Papa. As if they are dumb. As if they cannot think, Papa, 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 ah! What's that? Are you kids? Papa said, ah, Papa! Are you Robert? So I don't want one million of those. I want 10 who can think with their own head, who can take decisions, who can challenge injustice, who can do what God wants, who can obey God, who can become person. 10. I don't want one million members. So those things that our people are bragging about, those things that our people are, you know, making a big deal of, of just because they are making money off their slaves, they are keeping slaves, 100 million, 100,000 slaves, 1 million slaves, and they, 
yeah if yeah if that's your goal to oppress people if that's your goal to get things from people if your goal is not to fulfill god's mandate god's body yeah then you are doing good yeah you are you are a champion you are a big slave owner but if you, this whole thing is about god and his kingdom then you should be counting only those people who are pursuing that heaven's goal and mandate you should be counting only those ones that are doing what father is crying about and is weeping about those are the only ones who are your members all others are just people you are exploiting and using but since I'm not interested in getting anybody's tithe and offering, since I'm not interested in get, making anybody make me feel significant because there are many, so I have one million people making, you know, boosting my ego, I don't need anybody to boost my ego. My ego is already okay. I, I don't need anybody's money to give me time. Since I don't need those things, so I'm not pursuing my own agenda anymore, but I, am, I see myself as a born servant that is supposed to pursue his agenda. And since his agenda is about justice, his agenda is about equity, it's about truth, it's about you know, righteousness, it's about you know, all those things ruling and reigning on earth, that's what it's called, my, the kingdom has come. Only the people who are pursuing those things, it's okay, it's okay, don't touch it. Only the people who are pursuing those things are in line with my assignment. Because the person who, who, who committed this to my hand, who called me to work for him, that's what he, he hired me for. And those are the only people I'm supposed to be producing. So if I only have two of those out of one million, that's my success rate. So my occupation, therefore, is to be producing those kinds of people that God will recognize as men and personalities. I don't know if you get it. Yes. Because they are the only one God is looking for. Yes. And they are the only ones that are capable of pleasing his heart desire, of fulfilling what he, desire, he wants. They are the only ones who can carry out his assignments on the earth. They are the only ones who can, you know, do what he is eagerly waiting for, for his righteousness to fill the earth as the waters fall by the sea. So, what do I want to do with the others? They are not my priority. My priority will be what God is looking for. And if they, I, I will get everybody, but I will get them so that I will be able to train them and condition and help them to become exactly what God wants them to be. And that is the whole essence of pastoring. Let them come as weaklings. Let them come as biomasses. Let them come as illiterate. But my own job as a um, servant of God is to convert them like David did in the is it valley? In the cave of Adullam. He converted them into these mighty men. This is, these are all pictures. These are all illustrations for us to know what a minister is. And who a minister is, what a pastor is, what, what full-time ministers are supposed to be all about. People who take the weaklings, people who take the, what do you call them, the, the failures and the biomasses and make them into men and personalities in the eyes of God. That is what church is supposed to be about. Nobody should be sitting in that church unless they just walked in who is not a personality. Or then I failed if I'm a pastor. Because you only want to generate and produce and raise people who are men in God's eyes. So let's see that again. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off. These are the troubles in the society and in your society and my society. For truth is falling in the street, equity cannot enter, truth fails, and he who departs from evil is even becomes a, a prey. Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him. Every time God sees that, every time God sees that truth fails, God is frustrated. Every time God sees that justice is turned back, every day God is frustrated about Nigeria, about Africa, about your country. Why should God be frustrated when I'm there? No, 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 no. I will not let God be frustrated when I'm there. And we shouldn't let God be frustrated while we are here to do the job. So then the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no justice. 
he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him and his own righteousness sustained him. And he's doing it now by bypassing the church systems, the mega churches, and raising up ordinary humans, ordinary men, women like you, to become the personalities that he desires to have and to bring about the things, justice, equity, righteousness, and truth in the society. Slide to share. Next. Next page. He saw that there was no man, no one. God himself confessed not to have identified a man. What a paradox. Out of all the people in the whole wide world, there was no man. God can't find enough men to take care of business on the earth. No one. Next. The reason why God is frustrated, irritated, and grieved. His frustration is mainly directed at men. Men who are charged with the mandate to manage the earth for him. Men who are now so much pre Stop, stop, stop. Manage the earth for God. If you are a man, you are managing something on the earth. So the, my question for you people is, if you are not yet managing, but I am managing the earth for God by raising managers. Julie left her job as a project manager or a professional uh, top manager in a one of the fastest, is it the fastest growing company in the world? One of the fastest growing companies in the world. And she came to join here because here she's doing this. Not just managing the company for a man, <laughs> but managing the earth for God. Being a part of people who put the world in order. Now the question I have for you is, are you already part of the crew? Are you in your own little way? A ma managing, can you really talk to yourself and see God the way he's looking at you and say, yes, God really sees me as a manager of the earth. Or not yet. Or you are in the process of becoming one. It has to be one of the two. So my question to you is for you to answer me. Are you already a manager of the earth for God? Can God's heart be at peace regarding you that yeah, you are covered? Or can God had at least be at rest that you are in the process of getting there. You are planning to, because some people are not even thinking about it. In fact, some people are not even aware that they are supposed to be one. In fact, some people don't even believe that they qualify. Because she was telling me in the morning that some people, the, be, the best they, they make them to be to carry somebody's bag or water and pure water, pour water for serving the chamber for some people. So they don't even, see, can you imagine, people who are born again. The whole earth is waiting for the manifestation of sons. It's waiting for all of them who are born again, who are sons of God, and they are keeping them to pour water. <laughs> is that not what God is saying that kings are riding, I mean, you know, who are supposed to be riding on the horse, are walking on feet? Yes. So pastors are making sons that the whole creation, all earth is waiting for, for their manifestation, and you keep them in to be pouring water and drink. And what do you call them? Ami or what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> carrying the Bible of the pastor. I'm pouring water and juice. Where the whole creation is waiting for. So that I want to I want to find out if you are if you have in your mind gotten out of that level. At least you now embrace the fact that. Yes, I know my future. I am going to be a manager of the earth for God. Or maybe you are not there yet. Maybe you are still somewhere there. You are saying, my own concern is to send my children to school. My own concern is to get pregnant. My own is to attend that crusade that God should give me a husband. This one, I must marry you, I must marry <laughs> When heaven is crying for these things, you are saying, I must marry you, I must marry. I must give back to my child. 
when everyone is crying, crying about justice and equity. See how we are so far away from God's mind. I mean, can you just... People don't live life and they don't assess life from God's perspective. So my question for you, and I want you people to answer me, is where are you? Are you still in the domestic Christianity? You know, just making a living, going to work, taking care of your home, family? You're not even aware. You are not even there. Or you are still in the church, slavery, pouring water and carrying bag and Bible for some people. Or you are already planning and getting yourself ready. No, you are already sure that, yeah, that's my place. I am going to rule and manage. And then you, maybe you already know the scope, the area of the earth that you are going to manage for God. Or maybe you are even there already. Anybody wants to give me the answers? I want you to put to answer me. Yes, please. Oh, I can answer. Yes, I am ready. I'm working on that. Tell me in what area? What in, which er in which area specifically? Uh, in the area of. Well. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, specifically, uh, what I am doing now is uh, while I've been started working on God's principles and teaching them uh, in finances to Christians, believers in general, and I open up that. You don't need to speak much. Beautiful. You see what he has done? He has identified an area. He is going to empower Christians in the area of finances and release them to take back the earth for God in financial area. Beautiful. So he knows what he's doing. He's equipping himself for that. That's why he's here. He's living a purposeful life. God's heart is happy. He's not sitting there as church members somewhere and going, Papa, I mean, you know, and saying, Papa, I'm here on Sunday. Every Sunday, I don't mean church. You. I'm here. He's managing the earth for God. But you don't have to be dis disappointed and uh, grieve if you are not there where he is yet. Because he is here for the third time and things like that. But at least you, that understanding is what is important. Where are you moving towards? What is happening? Um, for me, I've already made a decision um, that I'm going to fight for God's kingdom on, on earth. And I'm going to Nigeria to start with because I think that is where we are needed. And my focus is to capture the children of Nigeria and Africa as a whole, starting from age three, five upwards to change their values, their mindset, because they've been damaged. The kids are damaged in Nigeria. So you are planning to. I am plan planning to, you know, and you I already know, started the, pro the you working see, that on is, this year. You know, at least you are thinking about it. You are moving there. You are walking towards destiny. Yes. But can you imagine that those kids are there? You know those kids are there in Nigeria. Yeah. Thousands, millions yeah. of them yeah. who are just being wasted. Do you think, and people will be blaming God, pointing accusing finger. What is God doing? Why did God, is, where is God, where these things are happening? You know, it's not God's business. It's not it's God's problem. Job. He asks us, yeah. yeah. And we have been distracted by living for ourselves. We have been distracted, put in hold by religion, by tradition, by culture, by mindset. It's not God's business that some people are fighting. Any trouble you see on the earth is because men, personality, who what God saved, died for, he, you know, equipped with talent and education and everything, have been distracted, not doing what they were created and sent to the earth to do. So, for example, you, if that is your burden, Children of Africa, I'm going to say something again. I don't know why it's always about you, you know, but you will not get that mad at me, so you're okay. <laughs> Do you know all these 40 years or so you have lived on earth? More than 40. More than 40, that you have lived on earth. Yeah. Do you know God has been waiting? Thank you. And those children have been wasted. Every day they have been wasted. Yeah. Why you are busy doing some other things? Yeah. And somebody else at that point is saying, where is God? And God is saying, I have them. They are all sitting in those pews or in their homes. They are all minding their business. 
only not my business. Mm -hmm. So everybody sitting in any church or sitting in any home, especially who God has redeemed and saved, somebody is waiting for their manifestation, just like these children are waiting for our manifestation. But to some and to most people, it never gets to them. At least if he, if she, it's already got to her, she is going. And thank God, that is the biggest breakthrough of her life. Because she's going to begin to live now. But some people don't, don't even get to even think about it. Thank you. Yeah. I, personally, I, apart from the other projects, I'm doing my greatest concern. What is the other project? Say it again. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm into um, helping empower, empowering the widows and the orphans. Because I noticed that there are a lot of widows who cannot take care of their children. So um, I, am, I have an NGO that I'm empowering them with capital to start businesses, mini what trading. Is the name of your Help for Africa Foundation. And Help. What is your name so that people can find you? Because okay. asked yesterday. Okay, um, um, my name on Facebook is Ernest Ebong, Ernest Charles Ebong. You can check that Ernest out. Ebong. Ernest Ebong. Ernestebong.com. That's my website and there. The site is attached. I'm using through my website and our church's web website. And some people were asking also. Some people were also asking yesterday, where do you live in Germany? I live in a small city near Dusseldorf, precisely. Right, Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. I live in Germany, so um, just you can get in contact with me. My greatest concern is the value system of our people, my Africans. The value system. That is what I noticed. That for us to make progress, for us to change the system, the value system of the people need to be affected, need to be transformed. So I've started in Germany. I've met a lot of Africans that have been bastardized by churches. And I am doing trainings for them. I do house fellowships and in our church. So I'm trying to get people, you know, their, their value system corrected based on the tradition, the religious uh, religiosity that we were, that was sold to us. There are a lot of mistakes that have been going on. And I've seen a lot of people are sitting at home now. They don't even want to have anything to do with church. They have got, I mean, here's a story that sometimes I, I cry. So that is my passion. And I'm really, and, and these people have been battered by pastors yeah, go ahead. and it has it given me concern and this is my passion to extend same to my country that's why i'm ready i'm ready to go i'm ready to go with you when you're ready and i'm i'm going to start by organizing training uh, through facebook you uh, know and i'm going to be on ground as time goes on you know i'm, I'm going to look for every way possible to get the message across in order to transform the value system of the people. That is the major problem I have seen. Value system. Understanding how people look at life, how they look at God, how they, I mean, what, what, I mean, doing the right thing. Because you sometimes, I, you know, I normally say, I have tested both pastors and Christians to just try to do something with them back home. I have been failed in all areas. So I noticed that the value system, people don't even have conscience, you know, of doing something. I mean, of cheating on you and just doing, going, going away with your money. And I, I said, no conscience, no feelings. So this is a big problem. So if this can be corrected, that people can be faithful, can learn to be, you know, I can, I would like to say something. Um, a few years ago, when I was back there, there's a one big market in, a, in, a, in Lagos that I went to buy a new electric iron. With the, all the traffic, I know most of you know that market called uh, Laba International. Well, you know, before you get to that market, in the traffic, I got there, I got the new iron, and I got back home. And I just plugged that iron, smoke was coming out. And I packaged it the following day, I went back, and getting there, these guys were singing and praising God. You know, outside, they said it was the time for service, and all the shops were closed. Christians. And right in front of the store that I bought this iron, when they finished, I just, the guy opened the store and I went there, I showed him the receipt, I bought it here. He told me there that I didn't buy the iron there. <laughs> and I did everything, he said, 
I, he started screaming on me, I should walk out of the store. I said I would go to the police. He said you can go. Praying. Yes, they finished praying, press wash everything. <laughs> and right there at the shop, he told me I didn't buy the iron there. And I said I would go to the police. He said I can go, the police knows them, that I can't do nothing. I, I felt so frustrated and I went back with this iron. I, I couldn't do nothing. He said, you can't do not anything. And he was screaming on me, if I don't leave, he's going to get the boys to beat me up. So this is the level. So people can praise and laugh and do everything, but it doesn't touch the heart. So this is the value system problem that, I'm, that is my concern. And I, I want to encourage every Nigerian here, you know what I'm talking about. It's a fight that everyone has to do. We have to value system. No matter how much money you pump in there, if the value system of the people are not corrected, it will be a waste. Beautiful. Thank you. So you already also identify your territory. Yes. God is looking for managers. And that is managing it. Because those people who are out of church and who are out of, you know, they are now sitting at home. But they are meant to be liberators. Mm. They are also meant to be deliverers and managers of the earth for God. Somebody needs to get them and, you know, make them, restore them and put them where they belong. So every one of us must at least have a dream of bringing a change to our uh, Lithuania, eh? what, what, what do we call it? I, I can't get to pronounce your name right. Liguane. Liguane. But you, you wrote something easier for me, Ravel. Yeah, that's my, that's my surname. That's your surname. Oh, OK. That's softer for me. It's easier for me to pronounce. What do you want to do with your life? How do you, how do you see yourself moving forward? Come, OK, OK, come, come, come close. Because you Hello. must have something. Yes. All of us must have, you must have a, an understanding of what sphere of the earth you are going to manage for God. Okay, so um, for me, um, it's two areas really. Um, one that really speaks to my heart the most is um, being um, the voice, not just that, to the fatherless, the ones who do not have fathers, because I see myself very much in that. Um, um, that is connected with who I am. Um, I just have a heart for kids who, I don't know, who've been, who've gone through such terrible, yeah, like abuse um, and stuff like that, because that's, that's also related to my story. Um, and the kids who are going through something like rape, rape is one of the biggest challenges in my country as well. Um, so those are the things that really speak out to me. And one of the things is my passion and is connected with how I've been able to, well, I'm allergic to a lot of things and I've got a lot of intolerances. Um, for so many years, I thought there was something wrong with me. And then I t it turns out that now I'm just, my nervous system is just really sensitive. So because of that, I've been in and out of hospital for years, um, thinking that there was something wrong with me. So I can't eat certain foods. And that's what has led me to be a vegetarian. So I want to bring an awareness as well to well, people. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to bring an awareness and educate people in the areas of food and just, it's not, it's not just about, you know, food in general. It's about understanding your makeup and who you are because you're going to react to different things and you're going to think there's something wrong with you when there, there isn't. It's just how God, Daddy God has just made you. So that's, that's one of them as well. So I'm, plan, I'm so planning on a, I'm planning, I'm, working on a blog now to educate people and sharing my recipes in there of, and my journey on, of how I discovered that and how I was able to move forward. Okay, now that is, you have to move, uh, you know, I've done things about systems. Yeah. So thinking systematically, you've got to think about going from little to much. Yes. So if you are thinking about individual effort like this, you've got to also think in the future about always having dominion. The Bible say, be fruitful all, to all of us. Fruitful, just, just doing individual efforts, fruitful, then multiply, then have dominion. So anything that you will ever do, if it's for God, 
it has to has progression from being fruitful to multiplication and to increasing and to you know having dominion so you know that is a system that you need to plan out later on in your mind and things okay, thank you what about you yes um i have a passion um i had an encounter with god and i said the the greatest revelation i ever caught is the love of god in christ jesus I believe that l can liberate a whole generation, but I believe uh, um, the, the, the previous generation has failed in revealing the love of the Father. And I believe that um, one of my, what I've been thinking about is how I can reintroduce Christ mm -hmm. to young people, to let them know that he loves them. Many people, are, many people are trying to please God by their works. Many people are bound by religion. Maybe people are, just like we said, they're carrying a pastor's bag and they think that that's all they can do. And one of my, when I got my call into ministry, one of the, one of the mandate that God gave me is to empower people to become everything they're born to be. So I, I, see, I see God using me in that realm of empowering young people. Let them know that they can build a new Nigeria. That they can build a new, they can build something better than what they have right now. So I really see God using me in that dimension. Yes. Now, listen, what you said now sounds so close to what a lot of people say, motivational speakers. People becoming all they want to be. But it's even more important that they know that it is not all they want to be that matters, but what God <laughs> we should all be living from everyone's perspective. It is all about his will for me as an individual to come to pass on it, as it is already in heaven. It is all about his will for in my nation, for humanity, to come to pass through my efforts as he already wanted it. His desires must be fulfilled. So it's not about my desire as much as, as finding out his desires and helping people to find out their his desires concerning each one of them and pu putting the faith in them that they can actually find out and then leave putting the effort to actually bring that to pass. Because there is nobody that is here without a program from heaven, without some plan and program that God has put in, in, for them and in them. So we need to unveil that so that we don't run another man's race. So that we don't just do what the, you know, the media is putting in people's mind, but so that it will be what God is putting in our hearts. But the most important thing that I want you to be able to get, every one of you, I want you to have that understanding that God is expecting you to be a, in charge of some sphere of the earth for him on his behalf, in his name. To manage a sphere of earth, a piece of the earth for him. To put his heart to rest in regards to your post, to the area of your body, to the area of your pain, to the area of the passion that he has put in you, to, the, to that area of the burden he has placed on you, so that you put his heart to rest. God's heart is at rest that. I have that under control. I have a manager there. And everybody that is ever saved is saved for this purpose, to discover and bring the glory of God there and put God's order, God's revelation of God, God's righteousness, God's equity, God's truth, God's, you know, uh, what was the third one, the fourth one? Just God's rule and order, God's value system into that particular area where he has put as a body in my heart. I'm always thinking about you, my sister, because today is a special day for you. And I'm connecting this message I'm using to connect you, your family, to heaven's heart. Not just for you, but for the whole family. So that this day is a day of birthing. It's a day of giving birth is a day of life for you. Heaven's life that you are going to be able to see as a mission and as a mandate that you are now living purposefully, bringing, making the heart of God happy.
I'm just going to leak a secret. It's like something that I can't tell anyone. I know all my life that God wants me to do something, but I don't know what it is. And when my, you know, I've traveled, I've spent so much on going to programs all my life, never miss any convention, any leadership meeting, any, everything, call it any program, any church programs. I spend, I, I'm ready to spend any amount if it's God's thing. But I don't know how to, I, I, what I, what's the burden in my heart, I couldn't express it. So when my husband passed, so I use that as an opportunity to tell everybody, my sister, everybody, anybody that might be watching me now, I, I, I use it as an opportunity to tell them that I want to um, start NGO you know, just because of my husband to remember him. But that's not, that's not what it is. It's a, it's a burden in my heart. That's a burden in my heart to, to help anyone that is broken hearted, regardless, anyone. That's, that's my calling, and I've known it all along, but I don't know how. how. I don't know how. We'll be going for one. And I will cry and cry and cry and cry, but, but finding um, Pastor Sunday, you know, I found my, my, my calling. I mean, I, 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 I had the breakthrough. And that's why I said the other time that I'm going to use the rest of my life because I've wasted a lot of time. I was talking to um, my sister yesterday that, look at my age, what can I do? And I was crying. She said, you can't sit. She said, we are the same age that she, we can still do something. And I told her, I said, I'm going to need you to help me. So I just want to, I don't want to waste time anymore because you know, I've wasted a lot of time doing nothing. And this cycle must come to an end. She is not out of unwillingness. So, you know, we talk about indifference, we talk about apathy, we talk about all these things. But in our own case, it's not because of apathy or indifference or all these things. She had the heart, but she couldn't be directed right. Nobody was directing her right. In the sense that she was going even to the events, going to you know, meetings and conferences, conventions, expecting to be directed, expecting to be taught. She said she didn't even miss any of those meetings. Because when you go to the conferences, they will be telling you, your miracle is today, your breakthrough is today. They make you to become egocentric. They don't key you into heaven's demand and into heaven's expectation concerning your life, what God wants. It's not about God's burden and God's desire. They're making you, they're actually snatching you from God's desires. Snatching you from everyone's expectations. Snatching you for why God sent you here from that. They cut you off from it. And put you in a hole, like we read yesterday. In a hole, in a prison yard of their own empire, of their own plantation. But they use your, 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 your ego, your selfishness, your selfish desire for things. To say, you will have this, you will have this. Today is your breakthrough. Today is your... They make all about you so that that way now they can convey you to be under their lordship. And then you are never available for heaven's program for the very same thing that he created you for. So what I want you people to get from this particular session is <clears throat> that you now know for sure like her 
I know now for sure that I'm spending the rest of my life. I have identified the area. Is the people who are broken? Yes. Now, now it's all the the other things are just the details of how the method, you know, to equip myself, to raise the money, to build the system, to raise people, you know, the tactics. Those are just strategic, tactical problems, well, questions. Those are the, the second level. But the most important thing is that I now know that at least oh, I am no more here just to sit in churches. So. I'm no more here just to be carrying water or for some people or Bible for some people. Or just attending and be paying tight and be saying I'm okay. At least you know that God has he sent me to be a manager over, manage the earth and bring God's order, righteousness, justice, equity, truth. And at least I know that, that at least I've identified with God. I am accomplishing his purpose and the girl on the earth. I am going to put his heart to rest concerning this area of my own body. So that is me being a manager for God on the earth. Let's continue, please. Slide. To sin by silence when they No, no, no. Go back to where we were. I've not finished the things I was doing now. The reason why God is frustrated, irritated, and grieved. His frustration is mainly directed at men. Men who are charged with the mandate to manage the earth for him. Now, since we have answered that question, God will no more be irritated and grieved at least in regards to me and you, from, with that first point, because we have all decided, right? Am I right that we are going to manage the earth for him? Yes. yes. We all know that. Yes. You are no more satisfied with carrying the bag. <laughs> or pastor's wife, Mama Gio. I'm <laughs> 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 To pour some juice. <laughs> so we know <laughs> that God's heart will be at rest concerning this one. Then this one. Men who are now so much preoccupied with their own day-to-day -day survival. Who are not? Who are not? Who, men who are now so who are much, not, not. No. Men who are not so much preoccupied with their own day-to-day -day survival. Okay. Let's tell the truth to ourselves. A lot of us have been here. Yes. And I don't even want to think about Africans in diaspora. People are just walking, walking, walking. Westerners too. Uncle Sam, this is Uncle Sam here. People are so preoccupied with their own survival, mundane things, they don't even have time to think that they have to become managers of the earth for God. They don't have the time. And that's why Mayowa resigned from a job in London. But they are very fortunate because they are not married, they don't have children. So, but now my question to you who are here is what are you going to do with not living for survival? What are you going to do? You are in trouble because you have children. Yes. And your children would need to go to college. Yes. And you have a wife, you have a mortgage, yes. you have a house. You are really in trouble. Tell me about that. Not just you, you are talking for millions of our people. So what's your own strategy? Maybe somebody could learn from that. I'm not sure that I've got an easy answer to that question because I think it is the most difficult part. I think finding your calling, as difficult as that might sound, it's actually easier, much easier than this. Because once you discover your calling, then you have to make the commitment. Then you have to 
disentangle yourself from the different things that have caught you in the web and the many, many commitments that you have um, that are going to stop you. So that it becomes a task for me. I mean, I've, gra I've started that process of gradually disentangling myself from um, all the various commitments and also to manage people's expectations towards me so that I can be set free do you from have my a calling. Plan, a master plan of, uh, do, you have, do you have a plan? For example, it's more concrete. I have a book that is called, where is my book? Uh, give, bring me some of the, the books, all of them. Uh, yeah. There is a book that is called How to Regain Your Lost Years. I don't know think you have read that yet. OK, because that will help you. Okay. That's how to get it back. Yeah. How to Regain Your Lost Years. Is the How to Regain Your Lost Years there? Yes. These are two, by the And then the financial plan of this financial. Yeah, how to build your financial future and regain your lost years. Can you give me the lost years, please? Yeah. So how to regain your lost years. So this book is written here also the plans, how to, how to make that shift from Uncle Sam to living for yourself. And do we have Uncle Sam also there? Yes. Give me the place. And also, Uncle Sam, this is another book that will help you to understand how to move away from being entangled to the system of the world to now be entangled back to the plans and purposes of God for your life. And this is going to give you the strategies on how to take the steps. Now, but this one will now help you to build a financial sustainability plan that's how to build a secure financial system. So it's financial, so that when you uh, disentangle yourself from Uncle Sam, you have something to fall back on. So it's a whole strategy to build on. And some people put it at two years. After reading, they make a plan and sit down and set a goal, informed goals, like in two years' time, I'll be able to make it, or in three years' time, or in one year's time. But it's something that you have to sit down with. Go to solitude, read the books, write down the plans, make, do, do, for, look into every detail. Then you know that at least I have a concrete target that, you know, by this time, this time, I am going to be doing what God sent me here for. I will not die, I must not die until I begin to carry out everyone's mission. I think that's something you might want to, these three books, you might want to consider that. Okay. Yeah. So any other person who is already putting that in place, yeah, how do you plan to do that, to make that shift? Maybe you I, are working, right? Yes, I, I was working anyway. Maybe I need to tell you a bit about my, my mission and my vision. I became very unhappy with the secular treatment of addiction. Very unhappy with the concept of addiction management. Uh, WHO Divine Health that embraces both the physical, the social, spiritual. But the spiritual aspect of it is distorted into spirituality, not spiritual. So this feeling, I became very aggressive with that. And unknowingly to me at work, I began to show the spiritual aspect of it. So I was sacked as a manager. So I lost my job on the 29th of June, suddenly. I was warned to stop bringing spiritual to the job. I tried to hide it, but a time came. Sometimes when I'm talking to you again, it came out again. So just call me up here and say, well, you are sacked today. As a manager, I packed my load and I came back to my family. Mm. So I became confused. God, you gave me this job. What is happening? I said, yeah, I gave you a job, but for a different reason. I need you. I'm, Lord, I'm available for you. In what area exactly do you want me? So I slept. 
I saw a hand, but no face, just a hand. In that hand, let me tell you the truth, what I saw in the hand. I saw broken skull, fractured legs, heart damaged, I saw kidneys, I saw uterus, I saw a bottle, a bottle. I saw a stethoscope and a stream of water flowing. In the same, just one palm like this, but no face. Say, God, what is this? Say, I've called you into ministry of restoration. I am not a repairer. I can't repair bicycle. I can't repair television. You are giving me hammer, nails, a broken skull, broken. What, 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 what will I do? Say, I'm giving you a new name. Mm. What's my name? He said it. Omar Baba Latusi, the child of the father who repairs. I became more confused. Who do I go to? And I begin to pray about it. I told my wife, and we are praying about it. What do we do? Ah, uh, God began to explain it to me. You said you are not happy with the secular treatment of the son of the repairer or restorer. The son of the restorer. He said you are not happy with how they have been treated people with addictive behaviors, not only drugs. People who are addicted to sex, to games, and people who suffer what we call redivisism, who go what, this, this child from court today, they go back they are from prison, tomorrow they are back again to the prison. That these are the areas I want you to work, empower them, restore life, my life back into them. I need them. But you see the concept of the scriptures. So what does that have to do with what God said? If I don't take your job, you will never listen to me. And God was right. If I didn't take that job from you, you can never listen to me. Say, Daddy, I'm very sorry. Now I'm ready to listen to you. Now, just a summary. It's longer than that. Let me tell you the temptation I got. Well, my wife now told me, I should, anyway, that area. And I said, well, okay, let me do some work as a part-time level, Lord. So that if I'm doing on the part-time level, I can continue my education. I'm still a student right now. All my children are in school. So I can, so I can make both ends meet. So I apply for a job. Uh, I was invited for a job in BC. And I went there, high post, assistant director of nursing. Not in a place. Two days after they called me, we gave you this job. So we discussed how much are you going to, we discussed the salary. Very big money, I will tell you the truth. They now said, resume, maybe in three days' time. Unfortunately, I have booked for this program. This is temptation. <laughs> I confess this one. Can you please allow me to resume on the 15th of November? He said, why? He said, because. I've already committed myself to a program that's going to be of benefit to me. So you are not ready to work. Take between the two, that program or your job. I say, I take that program. I love the job. Mm. Now, this is somebody, I've been praying for God to get a job. I got the job, but say, let the job rest somewhere. If God really calls me, he will foot the bill. How will I go about it? I need training. I need equipment. I need understanding. I don't just want to rush in so I will not just crash and rush out. <laughs> I try business when God did not give me knowledge about business. I wanted to do business to get money because other people are getting money from business. It crashed. <laughs> and I debt. I had a huge amount of debt from the business. Say, God, this one, I want to listen. I want to get the data, get the understanding, get the wisdom. But God warned me, and I have to tell you the truth. Say, you can learn about her, but copy no one. 
I wrote it down. Copy no one, be original. When you are not sure, ask me, and I will guide you. And I said, okay. I will just rush it to it. I will still look for part-time job so I can feed my family, I can complete my education. But it's a part-time job. Your job, that ministry is number one. And the money, whatever money I get there, I'll be able to. And I told my pastor, there's no pastor there. He embraced it. He said, I was to go to release the church, a building church for me, to gather those people together again, begin to start in a gradual, like a pilot system, before I get money to uh, do it at a larger level. I told him, but I'm going to Nigeria. But before I go to Nigeria, let me see the stereotype here in Canada and see how it's going to work. Maybe the next two years now, I might be able to go to Nigeria and do it at a level I'm believing God for. Mm. Beautiful. 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 So this is key. And I will also advise you, where are those three books? I will advise you to also make sure you study these three books. Uncle Sam, stop working for Uncle Sam. Wow. <laughs> then, uh, yeah. You need two more. How to regain your lost years? Ah. <laughs> How to build a secure financial future? Yeah, I want to buy that one. <laughs> <laughs> because you must be equipped and know how to do the trans transition. Yes. But don't just do these things for yourselves, all of you. Why can't you be on a mission of helping people to deliver people like we spoke about yesterday from that hole? They are in hole and nobody is saying give back, restore. They are, in, they are in slave, slavery, bound in slavery. Nobody is saying give back. So can we all make it a part of our mission to set people free from the slavery of living for self, one. From the slavery of living for mundane things of the earth, two. From the slavery of living for me and my family, my children and, and survival. I need to go to college, I need to send them to college, I need to send them to school, I need to get for apartment, building. You, you know that drawing, that is driving everybody crazy. Mortgage, rent, job, is there any way we could use this knowledge? That's why we all need to read these things, so that we could use the knowledge to actually set people free. And then from the bondage of fear, people might even know what they're supposed to do. Maybe they're supposed to go to Africa like Ifi, but they're afraid. So that fear, can we use all this knowledge to set people free? And then can we set people free from religiosity, sitting down, thinking that that is their calling and that is their destiny to just sit down in church and be bringing tight for the rest of their lives and just be wasted. Why God of heaven is waiting, eagerly waiting for the manifestation of each one of them. So let's make that part of our, no matter what you are called to do on your own, as manager of your own sphere, but setting other people free should be part all of our, all of our own obligation. Please. why God is frustrated, irritated, and grieved. Men who are now so much, who are not so much preoccupied with their own day-to-day -day survival. Men that have neglected his instructions and so the, the, I think this one, day-to-day -day survival, are we, do you, we would say for most of us that God has helped us to tackle that or we are still struggling. What do you mean? What sense? Is it that our needs have been taken care of, or is it in that the fact that we at least understand that we have to get out of it as fast as possible, at least? Huh? It's a priority. 
sometimes God will allow us really to be involved with survival, to learn some skills, but not to be hung there. And many of us are, we are caught up in those things. And a lot of, for a lot of people, it's death that delivers them. But then they are no more beneficial for what, their own purpose and for God and for the kingdom or anything. Okay, next one. Men that have neglected his instructions and injunction to rule and reign on earth on behalf of God do nothing. They are doing nothing. Mm, doing nothing. Yeah. So, do, do you think that some of us here belong to this category? Men that have neglected instructions and injunctions of God? It's very humbling, very hard to admit. But it's true, eh? Yeah. Sometimes we don't understand it, but, you know. Just because we don't have the information, we've been deceived. So I must be very lucky, because I, all this changed for me since 19. I was delivered from church. I got saved, and I never belonged to a church, so I didn't, this is the only concept I had from the very beginning. So I never really had the bondage and God just, and so we, for people like you who are getting to know this, not at 19, I don't know, you would need to accelerate. But, yeah, but the most important thing, at least you understand this now, that, that you are not here to survive. You are no more, you don't want to live in disobedience, and your goal is to be here. You are, I also believe in um, the last point that, the last point that uh, a mentor, a true mentor, will really help to overcome whatever those, those challenges are. Yes. But like Mrs. Uh, Biola, for example, she was in a church, she was in the church, and she taught by doing the programs of the church. That by doing the program of the church, that she was going to get there. So she was, but she missed it. She is no more 20. She's no more 30, actually. So she was following faithfully everything that church tells her to do. But it got her into bigger bondage. Now that she's 50, and she has to now begin to even understand this. But you wanted to say something. Man. Can you give your microphone to her? Because... No, no, fix it for her. Don't just give her like that. Uh -huh. I was just going to say that um, I don't know if this will be an example for shying away from the day-to-day -day survival. Um, I'm retired, but I do locum. You do what? Locum, agency work, uh, locum. Yeah. I'm retired, but I do locum. And um, potentially because um, uh, I'm a senior nurse, I retired as a nurse manager and I do prescription, so I work like a doctor. So I potentially could earn 500 pounds a day and 10,000 pounds a month, wow. but I have not been doing that for two years because I think that's going to push me down yeah. from going to where I need to go. So um, in the last two years, I haven't done any agency, but, but the, the agency calls me every day. But I'm saying, if I continue to do that, then that's going to uh, um, take me away from but where I need to be. You are doing minimum enough, mm -hmm. just enough to keep you, yeah, to take care of your needs. Yeah, the, okay, the other problem I have is that um, I have, um, I have, um, I have pension from my husband in America, and so they put a limit on how many hours I can do, really. Yes, they put the Government has the right to do that? Wow. Yes, they, they put I a limit on how yeah. I can't do more than 12 hours a that week. That's tax break. That's slavery. If I do it, I will lose, I will lose yeah. everything. I will lose everything until I'm 66. When I'm 66, 
I have no restriction. But until I'm 66, they said um, I can't this do more This one than a government slavery. Oh. It is, it is. <laughs> After my husband has worked all his life, after my husband has worked all his life, and they then still they are putting, control, yeah, they still put them go on me. And the one you were saying there before, uh, if I, since I'm just here, since, since I'm just here now, sir, uh, let me just say the, the one you called people out to say before. Um, I'm a voice for the voiceless, sir. Yes. And um, freedom fighting is what I do. And there was a there was a time uh, my pastor uh, said all black people in the church stand up because we want to pray for you because a political party was saying a racist um, thing against you, so everybody stood up and they prayed for us and um, I was boiling in my mind because he himself is a racist. Wow. So I got home and I phoned him and I phoned him and his wife and I said I said the politicians are, are racist because of church is racist because because of their politicians. I said but how about you? I said you are racist. He said, in one way. I said, oh, God, we analyze it to you, no problem. So if there's any wrong anywhere, I'll point it out no matter who you are. I'll amen, point it out. Amen. So if you, uh, in my book, you will see I go from trouble to trouble because, <laughs> because I think my light is too, sh I shine too much light and blind people's eyes. So they're so always you, taking me to. You need to go to a greater, greater territory, yes, yes, a greater yes, scope, yes, 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 yes. Greater level. Yes. And then that light will be able to bring benefit to greater amount of. Yes. That's why I'm here with you, sir. That's, yes. how, that's why I see, I see that I have to be here. Yeah, do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We are going to have break now so that you will we'll do dinner. Is it dinner they are doing? Okay. And people on Facebook, we are going to have half an hour break. And in 30 minutes time, I will be back to have live broadcast and, you know, the teaching, the second part of the teaching. So, but what are you feeling? Are you getting something yet? Yes, yes, yes. What will you say, Benita? Are you, do you get anything here from this teaching, this particular teaching? I do, and it evokes everybody, everybody to define the life's mission. And while people were speaking, I already knew what I wanted to okay. become. But as I explained before, I was confused. So I already knew, and I was led astray. So now it's like I'm living again. So my life purpose is to redefine the media, I have a strong passion for redefining the media. Redefining the media with kingdom values, Christian values, like what Oprah Winfrey is doing in the US, what Tyler Perry but is doing in God's the films, God. but with God's agenda behind it. So that is my life purpose. Some years ago, I had an encounter. I've seen um, God showing up in my room tangibly. So I know that this life. There's something behind, there's something much more than what we can see. God is real. And what God wants me to do in my generation, in my life, as I said, is to redefine the media, the film industry, and entrepreneurship. So these are the three main areas that God has. Entrepreneurship, so creating businesses, enterprises, empowering people to create their own. Okay, you see, that is how things have worked till now. Could you come, please? You are lucky to have an encounter with God. Jesus showed up in your room, and then you got you knew that there is something more yeah. than the mundane lifestyle that yeah. people are living. So, because God showed up, yeah. and now you know you have to live for something bigger than. But that is how things are working now. If you listen to most of the pastors, they tell you, "I had the revelation." I had a calling. God showed up. And that is what has helped them to get out. But what we must now do is to bring so much knowledge, so much illumination, so much enlightenment to everyone that they don't need to wait for revelation. They don't need any supernatural encounter to walk in light in the fact that they were saying, we need to do it. Angels don't need to inform people like this anymore. We is our responsibility. For example, when you are talking this, I'm thinking, hey, I have the name Benita, and I've heard the name Grace and on you know, my platform, but do you know it's difficult for me to even think that all these people on my platform who watch me on Facebook every day don't know these things we are teaching today. I'm, I'm scared of thinking like that because 
I'm scared how people are living there. How do people live on this earth? If they will not know all these things we are learning, all this from yesterday. Nobody should live with it. It's not, it's, it's not fair. Nobody should live without these things. People should know. For, then they don't have clarity in life. Because if you don't have this knowledge, then you don't have, you don't see. It's like you are walking through life like this. Just trying. Just somebody is telling you to go this way. Other are telling you do this. Other are telling you go straight, go back. But for me, it's, life is not like that. For me, life is in full light. I mean, life is like, like this. Everywhere is light. I know exactly what is here, what's here, what's here, what's here, what's here. Till the rest of my life, till I die, I see everything clearly. And I'm afraid maybe not everybody is saying like that, or Christians. Maybe 90% of Christians, maybe 99% of Christians don't say. And this knowledge is what they need. I'm afraid even thinking that people don't know these things. Huh? Sorry, uh, uh, one. I'll just as fast yeah. as I can. One of the uh, some of us have an idea of what's okay. happening, but unfortunately, we've been surrounded by people that have been conditioned. I stopped attending church for like let's say four or five years now because God told me to stop. Mm -hmm. to Every day I go to church. To I come home and I have free. to wash my my brain with hyssop, as in Psalms. It's like. What God is telling me is different from what they are saying. So I was told to stop attending church. Ha! I got persecuted in my own family, in my own household. It was a tough decision. That but was I thank the God. most important decision in your life. I thank God. When you were going through the, the, the qualities of a personality, I've burnt my bridge. I've made up my mind. And I've stepped forward. And I know that. We even went for this HMT. It was another thing. God told me, destiny is calling. That was how what I heard. I was, well, I was trying to delay. Destiny is calling. And as you said, a lot of times, God will use tra tragedy if he has to. Yeah. Yeah. To push one into their divine destiny. Because that has always been my heart cry. That no matter what, I want to fulfill God's divine purpose for my life, above all else, above all else. So I know what you're saying. I, when you're even talking about these things that people go to church, all those things, I've seen it. I have talked to them. They don't want to hear because, as we know, in, on this platform, slave masters don't want to let go of their slaves. They are only thinking about themselves. So and I want to encourage anybody that's not yet know what they are doing, follow Dr. Sunday Adelaja's teachings. Go to YouTube. I've introduced a lot of people to his message. They keep wondering, are you sure all this content, all this information, all this revelation is for free? It is. And it can only be done by somebody who has the heart of God. Who is also who has discovered himself? Who is a personality? Who is here to equip and empower others? That's all I can say for now. How many people will you say on our platform are aware that they are here to be managers of the earth? And so they are working in that knowledge and they are moving towards a maybe they have started, but maybe they have not started, but they know. At least that I'm setting myself free now and I'm going there now. Um, I remember, I think either the second time I wrote you, I told you that my, my, my greatest concern was I've seen at least four people from Dublin come for this HMT. And I was eagerly waiting to see what would happen after the HMT. But they still didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't see. Do you know why? They went back to church. There is something about church. If you, if, you are, if you are in salt water and you are a fish and you want to <laughs> fulfill your destiny, you've got to go to fresh waters. There is, water will not help it you. won't help. So they go back to that church system. There's something about that church system. Because you have to obey this. Exactly. Particularly if you're sitting under a man of God who has not discovered himself and is not planning to set you free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Who is not ready to lose his sight? Mm -mm. No. An offering. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. 
They'll prefer you be coming, and they have a way of soothing you. You know, you're in pain, but they soothe you every Sunday. I see some of them, they come back from church, and they are so proud. Ah, that person is not a churchgoer, blah, blah, blah. I don't even bother, because at the end of the day, it's the fruit that will count. So maybe people are thinking, if I go to church, that means I'm already doing what God wants. That is the concept that when you're going for conference, going for uh, leadership and all that and all that, it's where you're actually in the right direction. That's what people assume. But it's not the same thing. It's not. So there is an, uh, an artificial, what do you call it? Pseudo. Is, pseudo. Artificial, so, you know, when you sh remove the original and you put the fake. Yes. Substitute. 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 Yes. substitute. Counterfeit. Yes. Substitute. Yes. So the substitute in people's mind is that as far as I'm doing what pastor is saying yes. in the church, yes. I'm going to all the programs. Yes. To them, that's the kingdom. That's the kingdom. You, for, some, for, ah. a past, for a pastor to tell you that as a lawyer, that you, in fact, they discourage people from being personalities. They discourage you. How many people will go and tell their pastor you want to contest for election? <laughs> you? It's not, it's not they will concept. give you three branches to manage. Let me see how you have time to go and do wow, your, your political Or oh, you ambition. have to come to all the programs. Yes. Oh, they make you an elder. They will find something to tie you down with. And you think they are helping you. They are just tying you down. Like the elephant. Is there any there. hope, though? There is hope. Because <laughs> by the time you go around the village enough, you, will, you ask God, I want to go to the promised land by force. People will come to the end of themselves, just like the prodigal If all of us will be doing our best to enlighten, is can that help? It can. It can. I believe when they see the fruit, let's bring forth fruit. Amen. Amen. When they see the fruit. Thank you. Well, your break time is reduced to 20 minutes. Yes. yes. Oh so, Let me quickly disappear so that you can eat. <laughs> OK, Facebook viewers, friends, thank you for staying with us. We're going to be back in 20 minutes. So see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.